So this is a video of how I make my sashings and my cornerstone bits. What I do first is I will take my little cornerstone and lattice pack from my row pack. And they usually give you a couple extra pieces. I will count out 14 for the vertical pieces and 13 for the horizontal pieces of each row that are in addition to the A row. So if you're on the A row, you need an additional 13 pieces because of the top line of sashing. Everyone else after that is going to attach to the bottom of the row above it. So you only need sashings for the middle of the blocks of each row and the bottom. And of course the cornerstones. And the cornerstones are the same thing. You need 14 cornerstones for rows B through M and 28 cornerstones for the A row because you're, again you're doing that top line. So I'm going to take my pieces and I put them in a bag as I open my row packs and then I mark it just because then I know what's in there and I've got everything in there. What is in there now is the H row packs and then I did a block of the month a long time ago, I think seven, eight years ago and the very last pack that they sent you was the sashing pack so that's my pack of my fabric so however your fabric comes is fine I took my fabric and I cut it at some random spot and then I cut it in half on the fold so this is half of the width of fabric with my selvage edge on the bottom and I'm gonna measure and use a friction pen for the sashings so the first thing I do is I'll take a piece of sashing and I'll measure it. And this piece of sashing is four and a half inches long by a half inch thick. And you need a quarter inch seam. So essentially I'm going to be doing a five inch piece by a one inch piece. But I'm really going to do something a little bigger than that because I have to account for the fact that I'm going to be probably using scissors to cut the last bits apart because it's just easier for me. Um, you can use a rotary cutter or whatever works best for you. So I'll cut a piece that's a little bit, I mean if you want to get technical, it's like five and an eighth by one and an eighth. So I'm going to draw grid pieces on my fabric. I will take this and I will draw grid pieces at five, oh, I'll put it on the five mark. My line isn't totally straight. It doesn't terribly matter because again, this is just you're gonna you can trim them at the end because English paper piecing you can just trim it after you put the piece on. So okay, so let's call this my line, and I'm gonna draw a friction pen line on the edge and I'm going to come across and cross hatch it. Okay so I got my horizontal lines I'm going in that's my one inch and then my vertical lines shockingly in this situation I've got just a tiny bit left on the right hand side which is not normal. What normally I do is I have um, a shorter bit that I can use and I end up using those for cornerstones so if it's too short for the sashing I will use those for cornerstones. If you use a sashing piece for cornerstones, I've been able to fit four of them on there with a generous seam allowance. And um, with these bits, I think there's three. Of course, that one that's left, that's like one. But I want to take a minute and talk about the friction pens. Friction pens, the friction pens are made by Pilot, and it's F-R-I-X-I-O-N. The manufacturer does not recommend them for fabric and so they are not designed for that, but they are designed for the ink to, I will air quote, disappear when it's heated. And I air quote that because it doesn't technically disappear. The obviousness of the ink goes away. If you're using it on a dark fabric, you're going to have a white mark there after you iron it. So don't use it on a dark fabric. And if you're worried about this, test it out. Um, 
there is a chemical, and I can't remember the name of it, there is a chemical that you can use to um, get rid of that if you accidentally do that. So if you're going to use a friction pen, I use it on this because the edges are not going to be in the quilt. And so therefore the little red marks are not going to be anywhere near my finished surface. I have used it on dark fabric and I regretted it immediately. Um, but I was able to cover it with an embellishment, but because I don't have that chemical. But I wanted just to take a moment and let people know that from a manufacturer standpoint, Pilot does not recommend that you use friction pens for fabric because of that. But lots of quilters use them anyway, and if you use it, just know the limitations and warnings that are associated with the friction pen. So now I have all my grids done. Um, and everything's good to go. I wanted to say a couple more things about the friction pen thing. Um, if you live in a cold climate, I grew up in Michigan, and so that kind of a thing. If you stick this in, a, in cold long enough, the pen will come back. So, and it will go away again if you heat it, but just be aware of that. And this is the wrong side of my fabric. So even if there's drama and the fact that it's on the edge only, it's not going to be an issue. And I am still going to use this for my second colorway, which is going to be black sashing. And I'm going to be using it on the back of the fabric and on the outside edges that are going to be the back seam allowances on the English paper piecing. But now I'm going to cut my long rows and then I'm going to take scissors and I'm going to cut the little bits just because I like to sit and do it rather than sit here at a cutting table and do that. Once I've done all that, I'm going to take my pieces and I'm going to put it in a bag. And then I have it that I can assemble as I go because who the heck wants to sit there and make hundreds and hundreds of sashings and cornerstones all at one time. So I make them and add them to my blocks as I go. As with all things in this Dear Jane English paper piecing quilt, organization and labeling is the key. So I will go through all of my sashings and actually write the word sashing on it, or sash in this case, and then all of my cornerstones, I will put a C on that. The logic behind that is if for some reason a fan blows through and I get these all over the floor with a bunch of other block pieces, I want to know which pieces are block pieces and which pieces are sashing and cornerstones without having to sift through them with a microscope. So that way I'll have the C for the sash or the C for the cornerstone and the sash for the sashing. Then what I will do, and I do all this in stages because I get real sick of doing monotonous stuff, so I'll do it as I want to do it. Then I'll sit there and I will go through and put all the sashings on my bits that I've done. And I'll actually put these in a separate bag that I use to assemble my pieces. And then my cornerstones, I will put one on the left corner first with a seam allowance. Put one on the right corner first with the seam allowance. And then whatever's left, I can do in the middle. That way you know that you're not going to run into this weird section of, well, do I have enough for another one? It, you know, you're, you're pretty much assured that you're going to have a good seam allowance for each one. So I'll cut these and, you know, do the normal basting and all that kind of thing. If I use a sashing piece, I can fit four cornerstones on a sashing piece. And that's why I just cut a bunch of them at a time, because there's so many pieces in this quilt. Okay, so now I'm ready to baste my sashing. And I am going to start on the edge here. And I just pull away so that the fabric doesn't get all bunchy. I've had it. And I'll just push this. And I will try to push it on the edge. I'll push it a little farther in than the paper to make sure I get a tight edge. And then I'm going to do this side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm pushing the middle. And then I'll pull the sides. And the fabric has a tendency to deform. And that's okay. So then I'm going to take this and I'm going to do the edge. The reason I'm doing the edge is that I want to make sure that my glue isn't right next to the paper because that's where my needle 
is going to come in and pick up fabric for the stitching. And so when I do this, I am going to push the top on, and then I'm going to go to the bottom. I'm going to push the bottom on, and then I'm going to push these in quite aggressively, actually, so that, you know, and this dimple usually goes in, so that then I get a nice solid edge because every time you add fabric to a piece of paper, you're making it bigger by the thickness of the fabric. And so the trick is to minimize that with the way you baste and the way you stitch it. And that's why I'm being aggressively tight with this. This is a standard. I'm not sure if this is a Kona solid, but it, it kind of looks like one. And so then again, I'm just going to do this deal. And then I have <clears throat> my basted sashing. With the cornerstone, I'm going to do opposite edges. See, if I, if I do this, it pulls the fabric. It's not the end of the world for this fabric. Whoops. But, you know. Finish what you start. I have to remind myself of that. I have a tendency to go glue crazy and then not. Because this glue, of course, dries clear. This is a Soline glue pen, specifically designed for English paper piecing. I did use the school ones. Oh, hang on a sec. So I did opposite edges, and then I'm going to do the ends, and I'm going to push them down real well. And I'm going to do, and I'm going to make sure I get in the middle too, because that's lower. And then there's my basic cornerstone. The reason I use the Soline glue pens, I've actually tried to use other glue glue products. And the reason I went back to the Soline glue pen is, is a couple of reasons. <clears throat> First of all, the, fa the glue is specifically designed for temporary adhesion fabric for English paper piecing. When I used a Elmer's glue stick that was designed for school papers and things like that, I had a really hard time getting them off the fabric when I went to take the paper pieces out. The other thing I found it very unwieldy because it was a very large diameter where this is a smaller diameter so that it's easier, especially for Dear Jane, it's easier to use for those smaller pieces. This is available from paperpieces.com and they also have um, refills available. I've had the blue, I've had purple, I've had pink, all of them work the same. It, what it's personal preference and whatever is available. So then I have, so I have my basted sashing and cornerstone, and I will take two sashings, here, I will take two sashings and a cornerstone for every block, except for, there's exceptions to this rule, the exception to the rule is the first block, this block is H1, so I'm going to add the normal two, but I'm going to add a second cornerstone and a, thir and a third sashing so that I'm going to have a sashing and a cornerstone and a sashing and a cornerstone and a sashing that I'm going to add to this block so that it goes on to the above row. If this was A1, I'm going to put four cornerstones and four sashings. But for every other block besides the A row, I'm going to add one sashing, a cornerstone, and a sashing to every block as I finish them because that way when you go to assemble your rows you don't have to sit there and monotonously do sashings and cornerstones the entire time. So once I attach these sashings my H1 block will go back in my bag and I will set it aside for my row assembly time 